Today we'll be learning how to create a simple walk cycle animation for a character. Free project file in the description below to follow along. This video is part of a character creation series where we go through the modeling, the texturing, the rigging, and the animation of the character. However, I know not everybody will want to do every video in this series. So what I've done is I've provided a free project file in the description below where you can download and start from any point. So with that being said, let's get started. Super excited to announce that my new asset pack is available both on Blender Market and Gumroad. At launch, it's on sale, so the quicker you buy it, the cheaper it is. There's also a sample pack if you'd like to check out a portion of it before committing. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. So first up, we'll be using some images from the, this book called the Animators Survival Kit. They also have a DVD option. I highly recommend this book to anybody interested in getting into animation. I actually keep a copy of my desk, which I reference quite frequently. So definitely go check that out if you want the. So let's just walk through my kind of layout here so I can explain why I have it the way I do. Up here, I have the graph editor window and down here I have the dope sheet to give me control over my animation keyframes, of course. Down here, I have a reference, which I'll get back to in a second. Over here, I have the 3D view where I will be animating. And then what I like to do is kind of drag up from the bottom over here and kind of zoom in so that I can get an idea of what my camera view is going to look like and what the character looks like from that direction. Because in a lot of instances, you may not need to animate everything if it's not visible to the camera. That being said, let's take a look at the reference image we have over down here. This is mentioned from the book that I just showed you a second ago. And these are kind of the basics of any walk cycle. And you can see here that we kind of have five key positions and that we start on one contact position with one leg being in the foreground up front and then by the end that is in the back so then what you can do is repeat this animation on the other side and then you will have a full walk cycle so let's break down what each position is so the contact position is in both feet are in contact with the ground the down position is when your hip comes down and you can see here that the head is at its lowest position here and your legs are bent still both on contact on the ground with the back leg lifting off of the ground then you have what's called the passing position at this point your head goes back up and you can see at this point it's going above kind of this baseline of the contact position and you are passing your leg past the middle leg and then we have the up and that's called the up because at this point the character is at the highest they will be. You can see here, both the hip and the head are at the highest point as the leg carries through and contact as we come back down on that foot. So these are the basic positions that we're going to reference. Now, I already have a lot of videos on how to use the graph editor, mastering keyframes, and kind of other basic animation videos. But today, what we're gonna be focusing on is getting out a basic walk cycle so that most beginners can get in there and start kind of getting their characters to move with this rig. So with that being said, let's dive in and begin animating. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this image and just flip this horizontally because I actually prefer to kind of animate from the right view. I just find it a bit easier mentally. And then up here, you can see that I have all of my assets such as lighting and the psych wall and all of that put in this lighting category. So I can go ahead and just turn that off and focus on the character. So I'm gonna press three there to snap into the side view and then we're ready to begin animating. So here in the side view in pose mode, what we're going to do is we're going to select everything by pressing A. We're going to hit I. We're going to do rotation, rotation, and scale. And I'm going to do that on frame zero. And then over here, I'm going to set my start and end time to zero and 16. So what you want to do next is we're going to begin doing the poses for each of these. So first, let's start with that kind of contact pose. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead, grab this foot right here. And then inside view, I'm going to go ahead and bring this back. And this is going to kind of be tilted back there. I'm going to go ahead, grab this other foot over here. I'm going to move this up there great now let's go ahead and adjust the arms so they're going to be the opposite of the legs so there we go each one will be the opposite of the leg on its side great now what we can do is we can select everything hit i location rotation and scale and that'll just make sure that we have a keyframe on everything so what we're going to do next is move forward to frame eight and at the halfway point and we're going to go ahead and reverse the order of these feet so we're going to go ahead grab this foot here going to move this kind of back to the similar position as that leg and then we're going to go ahead and move this one forward there likewise we'll do the same thing with the arms grabbing those and moving those to each side and you can't see this arm too much but you see it a little bit over there and again we'll select everything hit i and do location rotation and scale now what we're going to do with everything still selected 
we'll grab this first keyframe here. We're gonna go ahead and hit Shift D and drag that to the end. And if we hit play, we'll see that that starts to create a very simple walk cycle loop. And we have a repeating frame here. So what we're going to do is go ahead, hit 15 over here on the end. And when we play that, that'll give us a bit more of a natural loop. Great, so let's move forward and work on refining this walk. So we're gonna work on the hip next. So we're gonna go ahead and go in between these two frames here. We're going to grab that hip there and we're just going to move that up. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here on frame 12, just move that up. And then let's go ahead and play that back. And you can see how we're starting to get kind of a natural bob there with our character. So let's go ahead on these frames and go ahead and adjust our legs to kind of match what they should be. So next up, what we're going to do is now that we kind of have this bob, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our legs to give them a bit more of a natural motion. So we're gonna come here to frame four and we're gonna go ahead and grab this foreground one here and we're gonna kind of match this passing through motion. So we're gonna go ahead and take that front leg there make that bend, take that back leg, put it there in the back, and then we're gonna move forward to frame 12 and do the opposite. So we'll take this front leg, make it bend upwards here, take this back leg, make it bend back to touch the ground back here. And if we hit play, you can see how we're starting to get a much more natural walk cycle as our legs move. But this still looks kind of stiff and boring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move to the front view here, and we're going to take our hip bone and we're gonna take our hip bone and on this first frame here, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this to be kind of landing on where the weight is, which would be kind of this back foot here. So we're gonna go ahead, rotate that to land on the back foot. And then we'll go to frame eight, rotate that to bend onto the left foot. And then we can grab this first frame here, hit shift D, duplicate that, move that to the end so that we have a seamless loop. And we can see there that our hips are moving a bit more naturally. But with our little boxy character, we wanna go ahead and add a bit more character. So we're gonna accent that a bit more by moving our head bone. So we'll come up here to the head bone and you can see that this bone here only has three keyframes because we didn't insert all when we did four and 12. So what we can do is take this head and we're gonna go ahead and match the angle of the hip. So we'll go ahead and hit rotate here in the front view. And then we'll come over here. We'll rotate this left to match the hip. We'll duplicate that first frame by hitting shift D and moving that at the end. Now, just a reminder for those that are beginners, if you're not automatically generating keyframes, you just need to make sure that you have this little button checked on. But let's go ahead and hit play. And we can see that we're starting to get a much more kind of natural wobble with our little boxy character. So next up, let's work on the flaps up here. Again, we already have these frames here. So what we're gonna do is move to frame four. We're gonna take that flap, move that in there, take that flap, move that in there, go to frame 12, move that down, move that down. And then if we hit play, you can see we're starting to get a bit of motion everywhere. So next up, let's go ahead and begin offsetting our keyframes. So offsetting our keyframes will give this a much more natural look. So up here, we can adjust the easing if we like, but for simplicity's sake, we'll go ahead and leave that at kind of default easing on most. We'll return there in a second. What we're gonna do is in the dope sheet view, we're gonna press A to select everything and then press period on your numpad key. What that'll do is zoom in so that you can see everything. And you can see that we have a pretty clean keyframe set up here, which is what we want. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we'll go ahead and grab these flaps here. And you can see that we have those two flaps right there. So we're gonna go ahead, drag across here, we're gonna offset those by one or two frames. So I'm gonna go ahead, maybe move one by one frame. Let's take that left wrap. We'll move that more by one frame. Then what we can do is we can come down here to the head up here and the neck, which is kind of our hip bone on this character. If you remember from the rigging, we kind of use that head, which is why it's named neck. So we're gonna go ahead, grab these. Let's move those over one. Now let's go ahead and we have the hand controls here. We grab both of those. And to make this easier, you can actually go ahead and tick this button up here and it'll only show the selected. So we can go ahead, grab these two. Let's move those two frames. And then now if we hit play, you can see that we're getting a much more bouncy looking character. And we need to go ahead and add another frame or two since we did all those loops. So you'll see now that it's kind of creating this pause. So we'll fix that in a moment, but you can see that we're getting overall a much more natural look. I'm gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit more character. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this head up here, or the root bone, I should say. And what we'll do is on that root bone, we're going to go ahead and add a bit of scale 
up and down just to give our character a little bit of squish. So every time they go down, we want them to squish. So what we'll do is we'll take it here and we're going to enter a keyframe there, insert a keyframe there, and we'll come back to this first frame here. What we're going to do is grab the scale gizmo and we'll go ahead and just scale that down just a tiny bit. And then we'll go ahead, scale that down just a tiny bit. And then we'll take that first frame, duplicate that all the way to the end frame. And then if we go back and play that, you can see now that we're starting to get kind of a squishy bounce as our character moves. And if we want, we can again offset that by maybe one frame up here. And that'll give it a tiny bit of a delay, giving it a little bit more of a bounce. But we're still getting this kind of awkward pause at the end of our run, which we want to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come up here to the graph editor. And in the graph editor, we're going to turn off the selection mode so that we can see everything. And we're going to press A to select everything. And then if we hit Shift D, when we do make cyclic, it's going to automatically add that modifier to everything, causing it to loop indefinitely. And then next up, all you have to do is take that end frame and adjust that back down to 16. And that'll help kind of fix that loop so you can see here we're getting a natural loop for our character. So great. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and finesse these keyframes and things. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that on one. So I'm going to make the um, scale balance a little more extreme. So let's go ahead. We'll grab this there and we'll tick this up here. And then if we press A to select everything and zoom in, you can see that we only have to worry about the scale root there. So we're going to go ahead and turn off everything but that Z scale. Select all, press period to zoom in. And we can select everything here. We'll come up here to individual centers, change that to that. And then now when we scale, we can kind of scale those out and make that a bit tighter. And that's going to just give us a bit more of kind of a pop on that scale animation. Great. And just like that, we have a very simple walk cycle for our character. Of course, you can go through, animate the eyebrows, the mouth, or even more, or work on creating a more exaggerated movement with your character. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as is for now. And I really hope you enjoyed the series of kind of completely creating a character from start to finish in Blender. I know it's been a request for a long time. And with that, thank you for watching. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.